Hey friends, it's Laura with Laura B. Floss Tube. Welcome or welcome back. Hopefully you're joining in for the Bloom Quilt Sew Along. If you have been following along, then you know that we have blocks one through 10 done. So today's video is gonna be on block 11 and 12. So before we get started, first of all, I just wanna say thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for following along. Thanks for sharing things out. It's really appreciated and I have just been so excited seeing the number of my subscribers going up and up. Kinda of crazy to think that 4,000 people out there have tuned in and hit that little subscribe bell. Kinda of crazy. But I just wanna say thank you so much for that. Um, and without further ado though, we're just gonna get started on block 11 and 12. So join me over at the sewing machine. for block 12, so I'll pull all of this stuff out. Obviously setting the background aside. And then matching up my fabrics. Looks like some of these got a little um, wrinkled, <laughs> so I'm gonna press these real quick. All right, so I have three of the flowers and five leaves. So we will get these matched up and sewn. So I was wrong, there's actually four leaves. <laughs> so we'll do two of each of the greens that we have here. These are tiny, tiny leaves. So I will try to remember to give you some tips about turning these out. shapes are sewn. Now we're going to cut them out and flip them out. Okay, first up is block 11 and we just have those three pieces for the flower to cut out. So here's one of the leaves. And just like before, you kind of trim a little bit at an angle around that point just to kind of give yourself a little more um, a little less fabric to um, worry about bunching up in that point. And then I almost have the second one cut out here, guys. Sorry, I went off camera there for a minute. And then we have this pretty little tulip. All right, now at these points, again, you wanna angle that a little bit just so you don't have as much fabric bunching up in that point. And then the center point, we're just gonna go flat with it. And then don't forget to cut down two, but not through your stitching line. And again, this other point, we're just going to angle it just so we have less fabric in that point to, when we're going to turn it out. Grab my little Fiskars sharp point scissors. And these are pretty big leaves, so this shouldn't be too hard at all. Just to stick your finger in there and flip it out. All 
Obviously, I still need to use the two-point turner to um, define my shapes a little better. But this gets me going. All right, so now we use our two-point turner just to work up in that point for that tulip. Just smooth around all the edge. Now remember, you're pressing against the side that has the fabric, not the interfacing side, because that interfacing will sometimes rip through on you. So you don't want to do that. And, you know, I'm pushing kind of hard, but not like super duper hard. You can turn a flower over, see if it's the way we want it. That point, I think, could be a little pointier. So I'm going to grab my stiletto. And I showed this back in, oh goodness, I'm not sure which episode it was, um, but you can kind of take a stiletto and poke down in that point and dig and flip it up. And you can pull that point out and get a lot better point than if you wouldn't have used it. And let's do the other one. Again, we're gonna stick it down in that point, kind of pull up a little bit, just kind of dig that out. And then we have two really nice points for our little tulip. So there's a flower. And sometimes I do that on leaves too, um, using that little stiletto trick, just because it kind of helps get those points really kind of pointy. Oops, I just poked through there, but that's all right. It will be okay, I promise. Wasn't following my own advice, or maybe I poked, or maybe I clipped a little too close when I was um, trimming those points off. It happens. I have a lot of pressure going against that fabric though, so um, definitely, you know, be aware of how much you're pushing and where you're pushing. But if you poke through, if it's really bad, you can flip the shape back um, right sides in and sew that line again and then flip it back out and, and turn it again. So, but these are fine. They'll be happy, it'll be fine. All right, well, let's move on to block 12. This is gonna complete the third row for your quilt, you guys. So this is kind of exciting. Um, so we have three of these, three of these smaller flowers now. And you might notice I just grabbed my little Fiskars. I don't really have a rhyme or reason for that. Just they were laying there. <laughs> One more. Then we have these four little bitty leaves. I'm just cutting those straight across the bottom. So just uh, straight across that tip, not through your seam, but just right by it. Oops, the leaves are flying.
I promise you some tips for those leaves. So let me get these flowers turned out and then we'll talk about them. Now I can use a stiletto on the points for these little flowers too if I want. We'll see what I think when I get all three of them turned out. I think they would benefit so again just taking that in that corner and kind of giving it a little wiggle wiggle Now, small shapes are not really any different than your larger shapes. They're just a little more fiddly to deal with. And sometimes they can be a little tricky to get um, turning. So cut a plus sign in these, not just one little slit, because if you have that plus sign, all your edges are um, sewn, so it will be okay. If you cut that plus sign, it just gives you a way to kind of flip the edges out a little better. And then you can just work your way around that shape. And that will turn out a lot easier than if you just have that one little slit. So again, just do a little plus sign instead of just the slit. Then you can kind of grab the corners of that plus sign. And taking your finger from the back and kind of pushing that out. Rather than reaching in and grabbing, you're kind of opening it up so you can just um, push that shape out. And, you know, on these, you might want to go around them a couple times. And I typically go both ways with the two-point turner. So let's say I, you know, I get it turned out and I go to the right in a clockwise motion around the shape. Then I will stop and then I'll um, go counterclockwise around inside the shape as well just to get that really good. Now, again, let's just, I'll just uh, try to show you again on this. I cut this plus sign. And it's pretty big on in there, right? And then instead of trying to put my fingers in and pushing and pulling out, I'm going to take these two and take another finger behind and push it out around my thumb, working those little plus sign flaps <laughs> um, out. See, I have one here. I can just flip it easily with my thumb now. So there's kind of a tip for you with those smaller shapes like that. Um, you know, try it. If it doesn't work for you, then, you know, obviously there are more than one way. There's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> um, not that I condone skinning cats, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you'll have to find what works for you. So again, I have my plus sign. I, ha I take two of those little flaps from that plus sign, kind of stick my finger in there and then push out with my thumb. So I'm really pulling this around my thumb more than um, pulling it out. That's more of a pushing motion.
<clears throat> all of our shapes are turned out for the uh, blocks 11 and 12. So I'm going to take these over to the ironing board, get them pressed, and then start laying out our blocks. We'll get ready to lay out block 11. The first thing we're going to do is just take our background and iron it in half because this flower is centered on the block. So iron that in half. And actually, I didn't get that lined up very good. So let me give that another quick little press. There we go. And then we'll open this up. And now we have that line. It's a little too bumpy. So let me flatten that out just a smidge. All right, so this stem will go right in the middle. And again, we're going to use the free fuse. And I do have a Teflon mat underneath my block. And I have a piece of parchment paper here to put over it just in case I got any of that free fuse in an area where it shouldn't be. So the first thing we'll do is press that stem down. Now we're going to add our leaves. And our cute little flower and that center point will go right on that center line. Give those a quick little press too. Kind of forgot to do that. But no free fuse, so no problem. Now we're going to use our eight and a half inch ruler and make sure that we are inside the line. And it looks like we will be pretty good. I think we need to angle our leaf up here just a little bit. Let's see, we'll get that right on the four and a quarter line. Yeah, that looks pretty good just the way it is. So gently lift our ruler off. Put some free fuse under each of the leaves. And of course our flower. Now I'm going to do the, under the flower on the top because that way I can um, sew all of that stem. If you want your leaves coming up from the bottom, more like a traditional tulip, you can do that as well. It's really up to you. All right, so that should be fused in place. Hopefully nothing falls off, and it didn't. So we'll flip this back around over onto the sewing machine table, and it will wait for the next block. All right, so here we go with block 12. I'm going to go ahead and press my shapes so I don't forget that this time. Now on this one, you know, if you're using your scraps like I am, you're going to have to make a few decisions and decide where you, what you want where. And this one has the three flowers, but that center flower is still in the middle. So once again, we're going to be pressing our background fabric in half so we have that center line. And I'll try to still get another little press right here just because. Now, before we fuse down our um, stems, we need to see where our flowers end up being because we don't need our stems too close or too far apart, right? So we want to make sure that we get them the way we want them. And grab our ruler. Plenty, plenty, plenty of room. And then the outside leaves are the, the outside flowers are the ones that get the leaves. So we can kind of put those on there too. 
just to decide if they're where we want them. And also for the spacing on the stems, because obviously if the stem is too close, see, because I want to, I'm going to move this one over. I have plenty of room. So we need to move this little guy over. Now, if you want the exact measurements that Lori used in the original quilt, obviously, you should check out her blog post. I'll have those linked below. I think I've said before, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and deciding what I want my quilt to look like. That's still really good. All right. So that's how I want my block to look. I'll get this fused down and then I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. We're back at the sewing machine. We're getting ready to applique our blocks. Um, again, this is block 11. So, and once again, I'm going to start with the stem. So I'll do the stem and then the leaves and the flower and then this will be done. So then we'll have the other block to do and then we'll trim them up and I'll show them off. So it's time to trim up our blocks and we are going to line them back up how we um, intended when we laid them out and just trim these down. Remember that center flower should be in the center of our block, so it should be at right at four and a quarter inches. And then our outside flowers, we just want to make sure that they're kind of, you know, it, I feel like it's more important for all three of the flowers to be centered on my block than necessarily for that middle flower to be perfectly centered. So I'm going to scoot that over just a little bit and then trim this down. You'll also notice that I like taking the strips off of um, the sides surrounding the ruler. And that's just in case, especially when I'm recording, to make sure that I didn't like mess up any of my cuts on any of those sides. So now these blocks are ready. I'll put them on the design wall and we'll talk about what's next. Here we are with block 11 and 12 for our Bloom Quilt Sew Along. This means that we are over halfway done, you guys. At block 10, we hit the halfway point. Now at block 12, we'll have row three completed. We have two more rows to go before we can finish the assembly of our balloon quilt. So this is super exciting. Um, just like I did for, row, for the second row, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my um, sashing and inner border fabrics while these blocks are on the wall. And then I'll sew those all together and attach the third row to the first two. Um, I'm not going to record a video for that because, as I said the last time, you can go back and look at the row one assembly to get an idea of just some tips and tricks on how to make it easier for yourself just getting that row put together. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you picked up a couple tips or tricks along the way for block 11 and 12. I cannot wait to see your blocks. So please, please tag me on Instagram. My um, Instagram handle is Laura B. Floss Tube. And make sure you use the hashtag BloomQAL2023. 
I would love to see your blocks. I would love to see if you're going scrappy. Did you have a kit stash somewhere? What are you doing for your quilt? Thank you again for joining in. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Thanks for sharing out the videos. Until next time, you guys, happy stitching.